Right, we're going to have a look at the uh, structural euro codes. Uh, the structural euro codes are a suite of codes, a system of codes, 10 in number, um, which deal with the design of structures in, uh, well, throughout the world, really, but it was the, they were a system of uh, European standards or harmonized technical rules which uh, specified how structural design should be taken or undertaken uh, within the European Union. Uh, they were developed um, by the European Commission or, or at the uh, instruction, if you like, of the European Commission by the European Committee for Standards and various member states had input into their uh, compiling. So the Eurocodes, as I say, are 10 in number. We're going to be looking at the British um, standards version, if you like, the English language version. So they are written in the English language. So BS for British standards. EN is Euronorm um, or Harmonized Technical Rule. And the series begins at 1990, uh, which is commonly referred to as Eurocode 0 or um, just Eurocode. So that's the basis of structural design, EN1990. And then there are 10 of them, so 1991 through to 1999, um, which cover various aspects of structural engineering design. Uh, 1990 is general principles. Um, 1991 or a code one, as it's commonly referred to, deals with actions on structures. And then the various codes 1992, sorry, 1992, 1993, etc., through to 1999, deal with various um, materials or situations. So 1997 and 1998 are slightly different in that they don't give specific rules for uh, particular materials as the other ver uh, the other uh, codes do. They 1997 deals with geotechnical design, uh, so soil structure into soil structure interaction, and 1998 deals with earthquake design, particularly for tall buildings and bridges. Uh, in various parts of um, the world. And uh, 1999 uh, deals with aluminium structures. We're going to look at the first few codes initially in this first series of videos. 1990 covering general principles. 1991 uh, which covers actions on structures. Um, an action is a load on a structure. Um, we'll come on to talk a bit about what that means. Um, so general principles. Um, 1992 uh, is, is the design of concrete structures. 1993 is the design of steel structures. And we'll concentrate on those initially as the uh, structural engineers materials of choice. But further codes um, in a future series of videos will deal with masonry design, timber design, um, and aluminium design. Steel concrete composite, so, so a mixture of steel and concrete acting together, typically where you have a concrete deck and steel um, beams um, acting compositely as a composite beam. Um, so those are uh, the codes that we're going to use. The uh, full codes are available. Uh, they're quite lengthy documents and in several parts. Uh, for the purposes of these videos, we're just going to look at a cut down version of the codes. Um, as we go through, we will refer to the various clauses or rules within the codes uh, and we'll use the referencing system from the European codes, the Euro codes. Uh, we will pretty much always stick to those codes that are published by BSI. Um, so the BSI publication 
which is called um, extracts from the euro codes. And let's write this out in full extracts from the euro codes for students of structural design. Now that's a publication which has extracts from all the Eurocodes 1990, 1991, 1992, etc. Um, and broke breaks them down into chapters, and each chapter deals with one of these BSEN, EN 1990, etc. And has the main elements of those codes set out for or suitable for students of structural design. They are quite sufficient to do most um, designs in actual fact, most designs certainly in early career uh, designers or where, where you're not doing too many specialist um, parts of structural design will be covered by the extracts from the codes in that uh, book published by um, BSI. Um, so if you want a document to follow these um, video lectures with, then that's probably uh, the, the best book to get to, get to, to do that. Um, as I say, uh, available from BSI. And if you look down in the links below, you'll see um, some links as to where to get it. And I'm uh, from time to time have various discounts um, available for those and um, the details for that will be down in the notes below. Um, as I say, we're going to start with 1990. Um, but before that, in the next video, we will look at what structural uh, engineering design is. Uh, and we'll look at a um, structural engineering design for a park bench as a, as a structure. We'll consider um, a park bench such that we've got various structural elements um, and we'll look at uh, how a particular load which is typically going to be somebody sat on the park bench um, how that load is distributed or the action is distributed into um, the various elements of the structure and carried down through, in this case, the, the legs of the bench, and then how that is dealt with uh, by external reactions. Um, so the first thing we'll look at, for example, is equilibrium as a, as a um, uh, part of the design. So the structural engineer's job is to take that structure, in this case, a park bench, and to design that structure so that each of the elements of that park bench is suitable for carrying out the function for which we're designing this structure for. So the planks that form the seat of the bench will be uh, undergoing various types of um, deformation uh, to the point that which if we overload it or if we under design it, then the structure won't be able to take the load and it will break in bending or shear or uh, that the legs, for example, could fail in buckling under axial load or the whole thing could overturn or, or sink into the ground. If these reactions aren't generated sufficiently to keep this whole thing in equilibrium and we'll look at what it is that we mean by design, structural engineering design, and the various um, checks that we have to do on this structure to make sure that it performs its function as intended as a park bench in this particular case. Okay, thank you for watching, and uh, the next video, as I say, we'll start to look at the philosophy of uh, structural engineering design and what we need to do as structural engineers to design a structure. Thank you.